Hello and welcome. It is day 11 of Excel World Cup Boot Camp, and we're just kind of winding down now because this is Monday. The first uh, first battle of the year is going to be on Thursday, and you know we were thinking it through. I think we've pretty much given you everything you're going to need to tackle the first few levels. But I was trying to think to myself, are there any other? You know, we talked about text as a big block, lookups as a big block, a few other little things. Are there any other kind of standout things that are? that are odd, that come up in esports, that don't come up as much in the real world. And the one that jumped out at me was uh, working with cell colors. So just to kind of show you a quick example, this is the Bear Island case we talked about the other day. There's a map, you know, uh, we've got a legend here, blue is water, yellow is sand, green is grass. Um, and you have to you have to use those colors. So, you know, that, that fifth level question that we didn't talk about asked about the shortest route to the airport from different places. So, you know, if you're coming from here, then you have to go around the water, which means you have to take account of that this is water, or that this is water, or that this is water, only based on the cell color. And that's a fairly common thing because it makes for you know more visually appealing cases. It's a fairly common thing for them to do in these cases. So let's talk about a few methods for dealing with the, the first, most obvious, but you know it's also the easiest. Just tag by hand. The the pro of this is that it's easy, and the con is that it's slow and kind of error prone. So what does this mean? Just uh, probably the easiest thing is just kind of tag one cell in a way you want, like put W in it for water. Uh, you might want to, you know, in this case, format it so that you can. It's easier to see that you've which ones you've done if they turn white, and then you can just go and copy paste block by block. And you know, it's not it's slow, but it's not that slow. Um, it'll take you a couple of minutes for a map like this. Um, sometimes there are bigger maps, but most of the time there aren't. Um, the challenge with it is that you know you might you might miss something like maybe you forget an odd cell here or, or something like that. Um, but you know if you, if you do it in this way that it's kind of visually easy to see which ones you've changed, uh, or maybe even you know have the actual color change uh, with what you paste in, then it makes it easier to manage. But you know we're always looking for for better and more systematic ways. Um, the second method that I'll mention mostly just to say, if you've heard of this, it might not be the good solution here, is there is a formula uh, that you can use in a weird roundabout way uh, to get the color from a cell. And that formula is called get.cell. Um, it's a weird formula because you can't just type it into a cell. You can't type get.cell 63 this cell. Uh, it says that function isn't valid, but there is sort of hidden in Excel, this function called get.cell, you can uh, you can put it in a named range and then use it. So if I go here, I create a name, cell color, uh, and then I paste, sorry, need an equal sign, paste that in here, equals map of that. There's another way you can write it with indirect as well, but don't worry too much about it. Uh, then I can use that named, named range, named function to get color code for each of these cells. So that's pointing to a blue cell, a yellow cell, and a green cell, and giving me three different codes. Um, a couple of things to be aware of with that. One is you'll see uh, that even though I haven't opened up the VBA editor, uh, just having any formula with this get.cell in it, because that's from uh, the old Excel4 macro language, gives you this thing. You're, you now need to save it as a macro-enabled workbook. If you send it over the internet, they're de disabled by default. There's all kinds of kind of fun to be had there. Also, if you have autosave, it will stop autosaving unless you turn it into an XLSM file. So you know there are some some sort of downsides to that, but uh, the the bigger downside to it, if I flip over to another case, so like here again is just an example of it from the uh, the Excel World Cup finals last year. Uh, we had asteroid fields where there was a number in them to say the size of the asteroid and the color indicated the type of the asteroid. So again, you could use a color to pull out, okay, now each of these asteroids has a different color, and then you can go to the legend uh, over here and, you know, similarly uh, get the CLL color of here, and then you've basically got a lookup table that you can look these colors up, look these color indexes up in here and turn them into asteroid names or other asteroid properties. But Let's look down here. We had the same thing with, uh, with ships being color coded in another part of the case. And if I use that cell color formula here to, uh, to extract the color for this gray, that's 15. And then if I do it for the cell next to it, this purple one, that's also 15. So the challenge with this is this get.cell color is based on a time when there were like 56 total colors in the color palette. Uh, so 
it, it sees the world in very simple terms and it it mashes uh, even slightly similar colors together. So that's the, the kind of bigger caveat to not using that one. Um, so next plan is uh, you can use VBA and I'll show you, it'll start with just a very, very simple uh, piece of VBA. I'll, I'll put this in the video description as well. Um, if you don't know VBA, don't worry too much about it uh, because it's, it's literally one line that you can copy into the immediate window. You don't even need to create a module. So this just says for each C in selection.cells, so the, you know, the collection of cells that you've selected, uh, iterate over each cell in that and make the value of the cell be the interior dot color index uh, of the cell and then next C. So then if I copy some of these, paste them over here and then uh, sorry, I don't even need to run the macro. I just come in here, press enter, uh, come back out, and you'll see it's colored. These as 19s, these as 15s. Now the challenge, if you use color index, uh, that's on the same narrow palette as uh, as the get.cell is. But if you, instead of using color index, if you use just color, uh, just make sure I've selected a range. There we go. Uh, then what you get is these these kind of huge numbers, but these are like RGB codes converted into uh, like, so this is, you know, red is a number zero to 255, green is a number zero to 255, blue is a number zero to 255. Uh, and then you put those all together into one giant big number. So the numbers look kind of intimidating, but again, you know, they're, they're pretty easy to work with. So if you, uh, if you come over here, convert all of those, that'll take a second to run, but several seconds to run maybe uh, there we go uh, and then again you kind of come come up here and just make yourself uh, a little legend by doing the same thing to that set then you've got the numbers all look weird but these numbers are now unique for each color and you can look them up in here and get back other properties uh, and, and work with that nicely um, so that's that's a pretty good solution um, if uh, if you need to. But let me show you a limitation of that one as well, which is, so this is from the quarterfinals of the XL World Cup of 2022. Uh, this question was all about voting, uh, but there was one question where you had to, all, all the input you were given was a series of 100 cells for each level uh, with different color formats in them. And the challenge with this one was uh, these, these funky uh, gradient cells. So if I here, there was also merged in the legend, which didn't help, but anyway. So if I do the same thing on here, uh, you can see that very clearly, can you? Let's zoom in. So you can see black is zero, but then both of these uh, that have gradient fills also just come up as zero, um, and then the other ones come up as, as good numbers as you'd want them to. Um, so hard to work with that one. So that's where we come on to uh, the last method. It is not as fast as, as VBA if you have a macro pre-written, but it is a lot more flexible. Uh, and that is to find and replace by format. So I'm just going to, one challenge with this method is that you have to keep selecting the range over and over again. So just to make that a little bit easier, I'm just going to select this range and give it a name. I'll call it VTS for votes. Uh, and then what we're gonna do, we're going to control F, and uh, you might not have this automatically, but so when you pull up uh, find, you can hit options to get this thing. And then over here, format, uh, you're gonna say, choose format from cells. Uh, and let's just say we start with the red one for an easy one. Uh, and then we're gonna replace that with R for red. Uh, and now this is where, because I clicked on a cell to select the format, it's lost the selection. So I'm gonna just, in this case, there aren't, uh, there aren't other things of this color uh, that I'd be worried about overwriting, but if I did this uh, on on Bear Island, for example, or, or sorry, Bear Island is not, if I did it here, if I replaced every instance of gray background with this or with whatever, then it would overwrite the numbers, and I need both the numbers and the colors. So it's a good idea to just have a range selected, and then you can hit replace, and it takes a few seconds, and then it replaces them all. Uh, and then you can go ahead and do the same thing, uh, format, choose format from cell. Let's take one of the funky ones just to show that it can handle the funky ones. Uh, and whatever those were, I think those were yellow, blue, YB. Uh, and then again, I just need to select that range, VTS, and then hit 
place all. And it does that. So you can see there's there's a lot of kind of, you know, fidgetiness and grabbing and whatever, but within the space of a couple of minutes, you can quickly turn uh, a range of uh, a range of colors into a range of uh, letters. So that's that's basically it. Uh, just sorry, I didn't keep up with expanding this as I went along. So uh, yeah, the get dot cell formula. It's easy to use, but it needs some setup. You got all the macro issues about not being able to save as an XLSX, and it combines many colors, which is the biggest kind of strike against it for me. VBA is the fastest method. Uh, I mean, even if you don't pre-write, if you if you have something like this, it's so short you can write that in, in ten seconds once you know it. Or you can just you know have this saved in a in a notepad somewhere and just copy it in. Um, so it needs setup, but the setup doesn't have to be part of your 30 minutes. It does have the same macro issues. Um, you know, if, if you run a, if you run a VBA macro, it'll it'll erase your undo stack. So you definitely want to make sure that you've saved your workbook. Uh, and it can't do patterns and some other funky stuff. Then find replace by format is the most flexible, but it's slow. And the other con to this one is you can have mixed formats. I didn't talk about this one. I meant to go back to show you Bear Island for this one. So we we talked about you know tagging all the water. Say you wanted to tag all the sand on Bear Island. Then let's select our range. Uh, let's format from cell. Let's take this one. Make it deselect bloody range. Uh, and then let's say we want to replace that with S for sand and hit replace. So if you look carefully, you will see. You know, well, first, you'll see that I didn't select the entire range because I'm a moron. Uh, but second, you'll see that it didn't actually replace everything. So let's. So what's going on here? These cells have not been replaced. And that is because these cells are a different font. So we're thinking of it as we want to replace by color. But what we're telling it uh, when we say replace by this format is replace where the background color is this and where the font is regular and the font color is this and the number format is this and blah, 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 blah. Um, but what's going on here is there were a few sort of beach resorts. And to get that little icon, there was a different font. This is Webdings as opposed to whatever the rest is, Calibri or something. Uh, so that's a challenge. And where this definitely kind of killed me, uh, I tried to use this method uh, on this one here, on the, uh, the ESPN uh, case. And in order to have things look kind of interesting and creative, there were, you know, there were different like dash formats here. So like one of the questions here was how many gray cells, how many cells on the racetrack, but you can see that some of them are formatted with dashes, some of them are formatted with different borders, and so, you know, if you find and replace format from cell, there are like nine different flavors of this. So what you can do instead, instead of going from cell, you can uh, clear the find format and only define the color, uh, but then in order to do that, you'll sort of have to go here first and figure out exactly what color this is. Uh, and I think you can copy the hex code. Let's just try and see if I'm lying. Uh, and then we'll select here, format, uh, fill, more colors, custom. And then yes, you can paste in the hex code here rather than having to remember the three three-digit numbers. Uh, you hit OK, and of course, they're all the same three-digit number here because it's a shade of gray, but you get the idea. Uh, and then let's say, just replace these with T for track. Uh, hit replace all, and hopefully that'll yeah, so you can see here there's ones that are oriented lots of different ways. There are ones that are different cell colors and so on. But because you've just, um, because you've only given it one input, which is, you know, the, the background color has to be this. You haven't given any cell input. You haven't given any any other input. Uh, and so it matches on all of those. So that's, uh, that's all I got. In, in theory, I think the best of all worlds would be to have a VBA macro that would iteratively do this thing, like wherever there is a blank. Um, uh, let me just show you that the one I have is here. This is the one I use at the moment, uh, which is basically says um, it's it's slightly faster than going kind of cell by cell to say, make this a color, make this a color, make this a color, make this a color, which can be slow for large maps. So what it does instead is it, it uses the same idea as the, um, as the find replace. Uh, it says, make the find format the color of of the first blank cell and then replace all the cells in the range with that color. If I could get that to pick up all the aspects of the format of one cell, uh, then that would that would kind of 
let it work nicely for the funky edge cases, but also for weird things like this. But I can't find any way to say, to kind of initiate the find format with every aspect of a cell format without going through 10 different properties separately. If you're cleverer in VBA than me, which you probably are, because uh, I don't use it all that much, uh, and you know how to do that, I'd love to hear about it, because that would help me. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I've got one more kind of small trick tomorrow, uh, which is just going to show you the mod function, because uh, that, again, like looping around boards and things like that comes up a lot in this context. Um, and then I think we're going to have a, a small sort of group session uh, on Wednesday for the day before, just to talk about last thoughts, and that's going to wrap up the bootcamp. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.